My name is Karthik Hora, and I'm a lead consultant at JK Techno Software SAPS for HANA. I have with me, excuse me. Yeah. Sorry, I have a sore throat. I have with me uh, Mr. Govardhan Reddy and Mr. Lohit Mikhileni, who are functional SMEs from JK Technosoft and have been involved in multi projects on S4HANA. We are here to demystify SAP S4HANA. But uh, before we start, a couple of points for all the attendees. Uh, kindly be on mute to avoid any disruption in the webinar. There shall be a Q&A session at the end of the discussion, wherein we would be happy to answer any queries you may have. You all can also type in your queries to the panelists in the chat window. Should we run short of time to answer them? We'll definitely get back to you. Uh, you can share your query with the marketing team and we shall reward. Having said that, a very important point to note that this uh, webinar is going to be recorded. So without any further delay, let us get started. I'll quickly brief you all about our company. JK Technosoft, or JKT, is part of JK Group. JK Group is over 140 years old family own conglomerate with a total turnover of over $7 billion. In fact, it can be considered as the father of all Indian companies, as it has a direct hand in creating many global brands like the famous Tata or the Reliance. We feel proud to be part of this legacy that has actively played part in creating one of the top six GDPs in the world. We are a global so software solutions company, helping clients to create the future with presence in six countries, and with over 1600 global workforce. We offer advisory services, enterprise platform and digital solutions across the centers of excellence such as SAP, Salesforce, Pega, Progress, CAD, Microsoft, Dynamics, R RDA, Analytics, DevOps, Java, Agile Scrum, etc. JKT have demonstrate, demonstrated capabilities and expertise across logistics, dairy, insurance, transport, healthcare, retail, manufacturing verticals, and solution companies through nearshore and on-site or off-site models. The agenda for today's call is why S4HANA, transitioning to S4HANA, system conversion approach, and the tools required for migration to SAP S4HANA. Let's first talk about why S4HANA. In this slide, we can see how SAP has evolved over the years to rebuild the business suite for the digital world. In, seven, in 1979, SAP invented ERP and it came up with SAP R2. R stands for real time. So SAP had built the standard business software, which was based on the mainframe technology. R2 could support and integrate major business functions in real time and had capability to handle multi-country and multi-currency implementations. In 1992, SAP had introduced the three-layer architecture in which processing was split across three layers, mainly client, application, database. In 2004, when the web was firmly established, then SAP had developed a new integration application platform called the SAP NetWeaver. Now all the SAP applications could run on a common platform and customers and partners were able to integrate existing applications easily with the widely adopted web standards. SAP R3 name was now replaced by SAP ERP, which is part of a larger family known as the SAP Business Suite, which also contains many other line of business applications such as SAP CRM, SRM, and so on. In 2015, a wave of ad advancement in hardware architecture brought massive computing power increased costs. Huge memory and multi-core processes arrived to offer massive computing power. And now a rewrite of the complete business suite was required. And hence came the SAP S4 HANA. Let us talk about the key aspects of S4 HANA. <clears throat> S4 HANA is built on HANA database inherits all the capabilities of this powerful in-memory platform, which includes the advanced text mining, predictive analysis, simulations, and powerful real-time decision support, which can access any type of data in real time. 
Next is SAP Fiori, which is a role-based user experience, which is delivered to improve the productivity and satisfaction of business users. And it brings the interface up to a customer-grade experience, which can be optimized for any device. S4 HANA Enterprise Management is also called as the Simplified Core, which offers support for all the core business processes, such as quotation to cash, procure to pay, and so on. S4 HANA line of business solutions integrates with this core, as we can see. There are options that can be added at any point of time and provides best in class line of business solutions and connections to SAP business networks. Some of the key LOBs listed here are for manufacturing, supply chain, research and development, asset management, sales, marketing, and so on. This slide describes some of the key capabilities of S4 HANA. S4 HANA helps you to reimagine business models. It allows you to analyze the continual streaming data, read big data stores such as Hadoop, and synchronize in both directions with remote databases and devices that collect data like IoT. SAP HANA has built an extraction, transformation, and loading capabilities, which is called as ETL, so that separate software is no longer needed to clean and enrich the data and from any source. That's how SAP HANA helps you to reimagine business decisions and processes. In this slide, we have summarized the S4 HANA migration stats as an answer to the big question, why S4 HANA? So as we see, as per the migration stats provided by SAP last quarter, 20% of SAP customers have already migrated to S4. And by end of this year, another 17%. And by end of 2025, more than 80% of the global SAP customers would be on S4 HANA. The key drivers of this transformation are improved business processes, and modernization of ERP landscape, whereas the primary challenges being the complex legacy systems and higher customizations. I've also listed the value additions for different industries like real time inventory management, seamless procurement, warehouse management, and so on. Let's move on to the next subject on transitioning to S4 HANA. There are many ways in which we can transition to SAP S4 HANA, which being new implementation, which is also called as the greenfield implementation, then a system conversion, commonly known as brownfield, and landscape transformation, which is mostly bluefield. In the new implementation approach, new and existing customers can implement the new S4 HANA system. This scenario includes Installation of a NetWeaver application server 7.5, which is based on SAP HANA. Installation of the HANA and Soft and Fiori softwares. And finally, activation of the required business processes, which can be done on premise as well as on cloud. Next scenario in terms of popularity is system conversion approach. Conversion scenario steps are updating your system to SAP NetWeaver application server 7.5 and above. Migration of the database to SAP HANA if the existing business suite is not yet on HANA. And finally, migrating data from old data structures to a new and simplified data structures. The third scenario, which is the landscape transformation scenario, supports SAP business suite customers who wants to reorganize their current system landscape. For example, if there are multiple legacy systems, which are consolidated into one target S4 HANA or one legacy, which is split into multiple target S4 HANA systems. So for transformation to S4 HANA, we can possibly do a new installation or we can do a system conversion from ERP to S4 HANA. The additional migration steps are based on SAP landscape transformation server, which is commonly known as SLT, which can replicate the data to move to S4 HANA system. There is also an option to set up a central finance instance. This approach is used so individual legacy source systems, be it on SAP or non-SAP, can begin to post their financial data in real time to a central S4 HANA system. The advantages of this being that it allows customer to get started early with S4 HANA finance 
but keep the legacy applications running on existing systems until they are fully ready to convert. The main transition steps are preparation, technical implementation, and semantical adoption. In preparation, we do analysis of all the used business processes, the S4 HANA innovations. We also identify the required integration scenarios of target state and run pre-transformation checks on the source system. Also, all the mandatory preparation steps are executed on source system. In technical implementation, we do the actual installation of S4 HANA software, and then customizing the adjustment and adjustment of the technical infrastructure is done. Finally, in semantical adoption, we adapt the custom code to comply with S4 HANA scope and data structures. We also adapt business process to leverage new HANA innovation functionality. And finally, implement Fiori and introduce new S4 HANA innovation scenarios. For preparation phase, here is an example of the business scenario recommendation report, where all the line of business solutions and corresponding business scenarios are listed. There is also a business relevancy percentage if you can see. This helps the customer in deciding the appropriate line of business solution. So through this report, we can find the business process that could be accelerated and could have impact on your business value. Custom code management is collectively part of preparation and semantical adoption. It is very critical part of the system conversion process, and it is done in two stages, mainly analysis and adaptation. In analysis, we generate list of findings where custom does not comply with scope. We also estimate the effort of custom code adaptation. Typical activities involved are listing the custom code objects which will be affected, defining the scope, and defining custom codes to be taken by S4HANA system, and parameters for which being incompatible change of existing functionality, functional equivalent available, functionally not available, and performance impact. In adaptation, we adapt the modifications related to ABAP dictionary objects and repository objects along, along with SPAW. I'll explain in brief how the S4 HANA migration is done using the database migration option of Software Update Manager tool by SAP, which is commonly known as SAM tool. So basically, this tool follows the switch upgrade technology. Where a shadow system is created in the pre-processing roadmap step, and all the relevant data for migration is imported to the shadow system. During the downtime, the shadow kernel is switched with the original system, and the shadow system becomes your upgraded system. Post which the processing activities and the other uptime activities such as power are done. SAP S4 HANA transition is based on SAP Activate methodology. So the key phases of this methodology are prepare, explore, realize, and deploy. Prepare phase provides initial planning and preparation for the project, which includes determination of solution scope and value. Also, all the readiness assessment is done on SAP ERP system to identify aspects which could have a major impact. The project is further detailed out in the explore phase. Explore phase drives detailed planning of the technical architecture and the conversion of SAP ERP to S4 HANA system. By the end of explore phase, the technical and functional conversion is fully planned and is ready for execution. Where assessment on custom coding from the prepare phase is used to develop a plan to adjust the custom coding and to identify areas to restore to SAP best practice processes. The purpose of realize phase is the execution of necessary steps to migrate to SAP S4 HANA. Based on detailed planning and strategy of the earlier phases, all the required steps will be done here to migrate to S4 HANA in a sprint execution approach. Here, systems and applications will be configured, tested, and validated. Finally, the purpose of deploy phase is to finalize readiness on SAP S4 HANA and its supporting tools and processes for production go live. This includes final testing, end user training, cutover rehearsals, IT infrastructure, and operations finalization, 
and finally conversion of the productive SAP ERP to SAP S400. Let's move on to the next topic, which is the system conversion approach for migrating to SAP S4 HANA. Here we see the overview of the conversion process. First, we start with the preparatory steps. So as we see the prepare phase and realize phase, which are part of the activate methodology, which is mapped against time. So in T1, we check for system requirements, like for example, one important prerequisite for the conversion is that system needs to be Unicode system. Also, dual stack systems are not supported. So we take care of such important prerequisites in this roadmap step. Next in T2, we run the maintenance planner tool. This tool is provided by SAP and it checks the system existing components, add-ons, business functions to ensure that compatibility with S4 HANA and also it creates a stack file, which is used for actual conversion process, which is done by the sum tool later. In T3, we do pre-checks. These checks identify significant steps we need to take to make sure that the system can technically be converted and that the business process can start running directly after the conversion process has been completed. Then comes custom code migration in T4. Since we know with S4 HANA, business processes have been changed and simplified. So this means that some, in some cases, related custom code also needs to be adapted to SAP S4 HANA. Therefore, before conversion, we need to check the custom code in the ABAP test cockpit for compatibility with S4 HANA system. For this, SAP provides us with the simplification list, which enables us to do an optimal planning for conversion to S4 HANA. Simplification list is the complete collection of simplification items. It provides key information by application or functional area about the simplifications in S4 HANA. Each simplification item details the steps that needs to be taken for the conversion from a business and technical point of view. Moving on to realize phase. In T5, some tool is executed. Some does the DB migration and the actual software update data conversion. Next in T6, cross application and application specific follow on activities like adapting the database extensions to S4 HANA and adapting the user interfaces done. Now I've showcased the high level project planning based on SAP Activate methodology. So the key project phases are discovery, prepare, explore, realize, deploy, and run. As we see, moving along, we do the readiness check, then detailed workshop is done for approach finalization. In prepare, we do project kickoff. With explore, we are ready with the cycle one, which is migration of the sandbox system in the landscape. In realize, we do migration of subsequent systems in the landscape. And finally, in deploy, we start with the cutover planning, and then we do go live and post go live support in run. You can see the overview of key project phases here. We start with scope finalization, where discovery and planning workshop is done. Also analysis and scope definition is done here. Analysis of the data quality, validation of efforts, timelines, hardware sizing, HANA hardware and licenses are all taken care of in the scope finalization process. Then in the project preparation, we start onboarding the project teams. We do the project planning, we do the data inconsistency cleanup, housekeeping or data volume reduction if required, and we start with the system migration for cycle one, which is sandbox system. In realization, we are ready to migrate subsequent systems in the landscape. Then we do the user acceptance testing or the integration testing. And finally, we are ready for cutover planning. Then in go live, we do the final cutover uh, planning and we provide the post go live support. It is very significant that we right size the HANA database. This slide is obviously based on the standard SAP notes and recommendations. But what I've done here is I have simplified this and formalized to achieve precision and accuracy in HANA sizing. As you can see, there is different approach for sizing BW on HANA, for standalone HANA and for suite on HANA.
Let's move on to the final subject, which talks about used for system conversion. We we'll first discuss the tools used for prepare phase. So the key highlights here are the tools which JKT has pioneered through various S4 HANA implementation and conversion projects. We have come up with an innovative way to track the readiness checklist, which has all the SAP recommended notes, along with description, status, and manual activities. We call it the JKT system readiness checklist. Also, JKT has come up with a template, an impact analysis checklist for cross application and application specific preparatory activities. Next, there is a tool called maintenance planner, as we discussed. This is provided by SAP, where we can plan for S4 HANA conversion or new implementation. And this tool also helps in downloading all the required media for S4 HANA software. Let's now discuss the tool for realize phase. Here we see the software update manager, which is the sum tool, which is responsible for DB migration and SAP upgrade. We can also use the execution checklist prepared in the previous phase here. To summarize all the tools and activities, we use the software update manager where we do SAP upgrade, Unicode conversion if required, and the database migration. Then we use the simplification list, which is used for optimal planning to, to migrate to S4 HANA system. Then the custom code migration work list for compliance and scope for data structures of SAP S4 HANA. And then the UI development toolkit, which is for adapting the database extensions to S4 HANA. Now, a very important question that arises on everybody's mind is, why you should move to SAP S4 HANA? So here I have listed and summarized the key benefits of S4 HANA. As you see, it helps in improving the business process, which is obviously possible because of the simplified data structures. It modernizes the ERP landscape. It supports the innovative business models. Let me share an example here. It's for one of our clients for whom we implemented PS, something called as PSM, which is proactive stock management on HANA. So using this, they were able to innovate their business models by proactive managing their warehouse on HANA. Likewise, the real-time data enable, enablement, end user experience, lower cost due to reduced data footprint. For this, I'll again share a recent experience with one of our production SAP systems, which was migrated to S4 HANA. So the source traditional database, which was around 600 GB in size, came down to only 150 GB due to the compression factor of HANA and migration to SAP S4 HANA. And we could further bring down the data footprint to 70 GB, only 70, 70 GB due to the data volume management and data aging implementation activities on S4 HANA. Next, we have listed all the possible S4 HANA conversion challenges based on our past project experiences. And we have come up with solutions through accurate assessments and SAP recommendations. For example, for dealing with the complexities of, we have landscape assessment as the solution. For custom code analysis, which is done to overcome the customization challenges. Likewise, for non-harmonized business processes, we do the business process analytics. For pain points such as dual development strategy, we have TR analytics in place. For unused custom code or master code, we have custom code impact analysis tool. Then for the infrastructure design, we have archiving or sizing in place. So before concluding the presentation on Kurhana, let me quickly summarize the topics we have covered. We started with finding the key aspects of S4 HANA. How do we transition? What are the ways in which we can transition? Then we discussed the system conversion approach and details, along with the high level project planning. And finally, we have seen the tools used for migrating to S4 HANA. Thank you all. We are now open to questions. You may write your queries to the panelists.
I have Govardhan and Lohit who will be joining as panelists with me, who are functional SMEs, and uh, they would be helping me in answering the functional specific questions. You can also write your queries in the email provided below to the marketing team. Okay. I see already there are a couple of questions. Um, Govardhan, you would like to take that up? Hi everyone. I'm Govardhan, working as a FSEO SME. This is a great opportunity to interact with all of you. Uh, we have a question from audience. Let me read the question first. What are all the key benefits? Govardhan, one gentle request, please. Uh, can you come closer to the mic? Your uh, voice is not uh, not audible. Okay. Uh, the question is that, like, what are the key benefits in S4 ANA from financial accounting? Like, close reporting prospective when a MNC plan migration from ECC. So, very interesting question. So, answer to this question, like, we, majorly we have four type of benefits. First one is continuation accounting across accounting standards, insight into financial and management accounting at any time based on a single financial truth, intelligent automation and recommendations, leveraging machine learning and advanced analytics that reduce errors and free up time for value added activities, support of multiple accounting standards with no manual efforts. Second one is Accurate recording of financial and logistic entries. Increased accuracy through assisted manual and automated postings. Single financial truth through integration of subledger and business transactions. Harmonized, standardized, and real time financial information in a multi system environment that is called as a central finance. Third benefit is reduce manual effort and risk of errors by automating. The group wide close in line with multiple reporting standards. Instant access to financial information on entity, business unit, group level throughout the period for better decision making. The last benefit is like in financial reporting, you can extract the financial statement at entity level and group level, efficient annual report creation, legal disclosure including digital submission, centralized tax, and legal reporting. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Lohit. Uh, we have a question in from the audience on what are the other ways to accelerate the conversion process uh, without compromising the quality. Uh, so from our past experience of various conversion projects and implementations, uh, uh, like Karthik has already mentioned in his uh, PPT, we have developed various accelerators. And just to give you some examples, uh, we have a hint and tip database that helps our team to quickly resolve issues uh, which commonly occur during the conversion. Uh, we have tools to support business partner conversion or custom code adoption. Uh, for that, the example would be the activation of baddies, uh, which would be generally left out as inactive baddies after technical conversion. <clears throat> Another impressive accelerator is, uh, which we have developed for a global rollout for a diary, is an RPA bot that would be able to perform the financial data reconciliation. Uh, before and after conversion of the system, uh, which would be much faster and more reliable uh, than the manual conversion process uh, that SAP sub, uh, suggests. And uh, this can change from scenario to scenario and depends upon the landscape of the customers.
we have another question from the audience like what are the major activities in system conversion from the functional perspective yeah when it comes to the system conversion the functional activities are performed in a phasial manner initially there will be a recheck phase where the consistency check on the existing configuration is performed and fixed secondly in the conversion phase all reconciliation and data validation along with function regression and integration testing of all business process are performed upon the satisfactory once the development is done ensure safe and efficient operation and also innovation for further plans Yes, further, uh, further to add to what Mr. Gordon has said, uh, from a supply chain perspective, the key uh, points to check are the business partner conversion, existing credit management, uh, storage location MRP, uh, MRP check, uh, and third party add on compatibility. Uh, we have a one more question from the audience like what are the reconciliation challenges addressed in s4 on uh, i can say single source of truth ac doka is the answer to the question as all the data from the various routes now stored and updated in ac doka table as a line items and hence no reconciliation is required between the sub modules with general ledger Okay, I can see one important question, which is on how HANA helps you in lowering down the cost. So the answer to this would be uh, first would be by uh, reducing the data footprint. So as we discussed, it uh, it has a compression ratio of up to ten times when compared to traditional databases. And also there are data aging uh, facilities available on S4 HANA, which are, which can be easily integrated with application layer. So your application and database layer are in sync. Moreover, in S4 HANA, there are no, no, there's no concept of cluster tables or pool tables, and there are very less now standard tables available in the ABAP repository of SAP. Hope that answers uh, the question. Okay, there are uh, no more questions coming up. I would request you all, uh, if you have any question uh, in future, you can write to us, you can write your queries to us in the email provided below, which is uh, for the marketing team. And we shall revert at the earliest. So thank you all, thank you for joining in.